Rain Man was released in 1988. It's about an autistic savant called Raymond Babbitt. He was the first mainstream representation of autism in a Hollywood blockbuster. He represents the extremely rare autistic savants who have an extraordinary talent that stems from autism. Many people believe that the use of an autistic savant here is very stereotypical, but to the film's credit, they never once try to imply that every single autistic person is like him. They even try to make it clear that he's a rare case. In his particular case, he's pretty well off. He's very high functioning. Okay, not in the best way. Saying that he's well off definitely isn't the best way of, of explaining how he's a rare case, considering that that's not really how autism works. Autism is a wide spectrum and plenty of people or different, have, it, it is very different for everyone who has it. But at the same time, this was a, this was made. This film was made at a time when they didn't know a lot about autism. And I think that for its time, I feel like they did capture it reasonably well. I said read the telephone book last night. Did Sally four six one oh one nine two? The boy who could fly only came out two years earlier, and this was a representation of autism as well, but was rather unrealistic, ending with the main teenage autistic boy out of nowhere suddenly being able to talk good bye now the problem with this is that while it's perfectly common to speak later than usual with autism. To learn to speak in your teenage years is extremely rare and it is quite possible that this could potentially give false hope to parents of autistic children. Back to Rain Man. Today I am talking about how Rain Man represents autism, particularly through the use of editing. In this scene, Raymond is stimming. Stimming is a series of movements those on the autistic spectrum do when they're fixating on a certain thing. The lighting seems particularly dark when he's rocking back and forth. When you watch this scene, they switch between Raymond rocking in the dark and Charlie standing in the light. When autistics stim, they tend to be going deep into their own world and not thinking about their surroundings. The editing and lighting of this scene captures that very well. When Raymond is experiencing sensory overload due to the noise, the editors have made the noises louder to help us feel what he is feeling. Hey, it will also tend to focus the camera on whatever Raymond is focusing on. When Raymond is stirring at the don't walk sign, the camera will use several different shots of that. It will help give us an insight into what the world is like for him. At the beginning of the film, it appears as though Raymond has no real understanding of human pain or emotion. But throughout the film, we gradually learn this isn't entirely the case. We find out that Raymond accidentally burned his brother Charlie when he was just a small boy. He burned him using hot water. This is what sent Raymond to an institution. But when the grown-up Charlie turns the bath water on, Raymond has a flashback. Raymond was terrified that the same thing could have very well happen again. This is clear evidence that he's not the emotionless robot some people believe him to be, and that he does really have compassion for his brother. This is one aspect of the film that actually portrays autism very well, because in most cases there is empathy. Autistic people can experience very strong empathy, it's just not always obvious that it's there, or it can be experienced in a different way, or show expressed in a different way. But that does not mean that there is no empathy. In the end, I will say Rain Man is definitely not a perfect representation of autism, but I would say it's definitely the best for its time, and 
I would say as a whole, it does capture the autistic world pretty well, in my personal opinion. Thank you for watching. I like having you for my brother. I'm an excellent driver. Yes, you are.